Today it's time for a much requested video, where I'll be showcasing my own personal Imperial Guard army. Hello and welcome back to War Spets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So I've been collecting Imperial Guard for quite some years now, I think roughly 10 or 11 to be exact, steadily chipping away and adding things as the different editions rolled by. In this video I'm going to show off some pictures of my own painted miniatures, talk about the fluff and background behind the state's 12th Enforcer Regiment, and about how the army has developed and progressed over several editions of 40k, and hopefully share a few insights I've learned as to collecting guard along the way. I would like to preface this by saying that I'm more of a gamer than a painter, and in particular my guards tend to be the army where I've been a little bit more lax with the paint jobs compared with the others. I decided quite early on that this was very much a quantity over quality type army, but I still think that the effects that they have on the tabletop is pretty impressive. So if we start by looking at a few whole army shots first, this is the vast majority of my Imperial Guard regiment. At the time of recording, it equates to around about 9,000 points, and has around about 400 to 450 models in it, most of which were pictured here, though I couldn't fit all the heavy weapon teams in. These are just a few basic broad pictures, and I'll show a few more high detail ones that I've taken in the light box to highlight certain units or formations. The army first started in 5th edition 40k, around about 10 years ago now, I believe. It was actually part of a doubles army force for a tournament at Warhammer World at the time. I really enjoyed some of the rules for the guard models at that point, particularly things like griffins and veterans and chimeras. So I started out with a small guard force. I wanted to put a bit of a different twist on a traditional guard army, so I decided that my guard force were going to be unequivocally the bad guys. The 12th Enforcer Regiment comes from the planet of Orwell, a world with a large populace, and even amongst the worlds of the Imperium is well known for its autocracy and dystopian repression of its own people. Typically there is no higher authority in the Imperium than the Emperor, but on the world of Orwell it is very much the planet's own governing system, known only as the State, that forces the planet's populace to worship it above all else. The 12th Enforcer Regiment are far more of a planetary police force than a traditional military unit, far more accustomed to using their guns and heavy armament to quash workers' revolts and uprisings against the injustices reportedly committed by the planet's ruling class. Despite the brutal slaughter of its own civilians and reported blasphemies against the Emperor's name, the planetary government is tolerated within the sector, as the efficiency of total control does supply the wider Imperium with a constant stream of men and equipment. Many a would-be revolutionary fears the wrath of the white armoured enforcers, whether they be breaching houses with their riot shield formations, or destroying a pocket of resistance by the brutal approach of quarantine and extermination with mass bombardment from their signature griffin and wyvern artillery pieces. So most definitely the bad guys here, and it's been quite fun making an Imperial Guard regiment that's quite so obviously not the sort of people that you'd really want on your side. So these guys are some of the ones that I first started out with with the guard, part of that initial doubles tournament force. As it was quite a small army, I believe it was two chimeras, a couple of griffins, and a vendetta, I was able to put really quite a lot of love and effort into trying to make them look good, and quite a lot of these guys sport some fancy freehand with camo patterns on the cloth of the infantry, or converted roadsides on their bases, to some of the text and styling on the side of the tanks, which I haven't replicated quite as much in the later additions to the army. I felt the chimeras could be law enforcement and police command type vehicles, not out of place on the streets of a slightly despotic hive city so I felt some slogans wouldn't be out of place to keep the citizens in line. In terms of painting these guys, typically I'd spray them white to start with, and then just go round with grey paints on all the millions of little rivets, which does take quite a bit of time, but I think the effect is quite well worth it when you get there. This guy was the first test case for the army, Garsman 101, showing off a little bit of the early camo that I used to paint on them, that very much hasn't taken place for the rest of the army. This gentleman is known only as the Commissioner, and he may not be dressed as ornately as some of the other gentlemen in the Officer Corps of the Regiment, but he's a figure of terror in the citizens of Orwell. In actual games with my Imperial Guard, he tends to be the Warlord, keeping his Warlord trait nice and safe at the back, and well away from enemy lines, he'll often be bravely leading from the back, skulking in cover with his camo gear. I quite enjoyed making this heavy weapons team, and I quite enjoyed converting things like the edges of roads and curbs and things, to try and give the impact that they're very much fighting in a more civilian type environment, rather than just more typical open broken ground or shattered ruined cities. Griffins were some of my first additions to the armour of the army. I was a really big fan of their rules in 6th, with their blast templates and re-rolling to hit. It was rare that you'd ever face armies that they didn't have some sort of decent target against. I think I acquired one griffin second hand, and converted the best out of battle cannon bits. They were branded as riot dispersal vehicles in a slightly ominous way. 
and it seems that this one is being used as planetary governor General Francisco's personal campaign wagon, who seems to have legendary popularity. Here he is shoring up his statistics by such slogans as Vote General Francisco, we record who does not, and Keep your family safe, vote General Francisco. Who could possibly argue with such a reasonable message? Alongside it, this one also used to be a griffin, although it can now be lifted out and swapped out for a basilisk, and again it had some nice open space for some freehand. This side is trying to persuade you to join the city police force for all the advantages it can give, and this one's trying to provide a little bit of incentive to help out with the important information gathering of the state. I believe the majority of this Valkyrie was second hand as well, so I magnetised and used some Land Raider sponsons to make it into a Vendetta. I know it's seen with a heavy bolter here, but that is magnetised and it can be swapped out with twin las cannons either side as well. Again, a little bit more space for some cheery slogans, one on each wing, although I admit that it's probably not going to be very easy for normal citizens to read this as people are flying over them. And I have magnetised the wings as well, so those twin las cannons can be swapped out for something else, such as borrowing a couple of Avenged Gatling cannons from my knights, which allows me to field him as a sort of counts as vulture gunship with Punisher cannons. We'll just say that those Avenger Gatling cannons are firing some very low calibre bullets. I think that this was very much retrofitted, everything was glued to start with, the original gunship was done before I really knew how to magnetise. This force stayed fairly small for a while, and then I decided to rapidly expand it, getting quite taken by the idea of a large foot guard regiment, as I just really enjoyed the hoardy type playstyle. At the time I was doing quite a lot of buying and selling on eBay while I was at university, and trying to make a bit of money by buying in large batches of pre-owned 40k from people, and then reselling them on eBay again, unit by unit, which usually leads to you making a small profit. It did mean that any Imperial Guard stuff that came my way, I could potentially just cream off a few Guardsmen, and it meant that I could acquire quite a lot of infantry for really quite cheap comparatively, and pretty much my entire section of infantry and heavy weapon teams is all second hand. The majority of my Guardsmen aren't incredibly well painted to be honest, this was very much a rapid expansion phase where I made the decision, yep I'm just going to try and get a lot of these guys on the table and in some sort of state where I can play them painted, even if that does mean sacrificing some of the quality of the initial start of the army. I think this very rapidly turned into something like 120 guardsmen and a whole bunch of heavy weapon teams and things, and I was fielding them in big combined squads and huge 50-man conscript squads, as you could do back in 7th. I then got into a bit of a phase where I was thinking about trying to use some of the Forge World options in 7th edition. Basically I thought that the rules for the renegades and heretics in Forge World were incredibly strong indeed, and to be honest they were, you could get things like griffin tanks at 35 points that threw ordnance weapons around, and Games Workshop came out with their wyvern kit as well, giving you another little murderous anti-infantry artillery tank that was ridiculously efficient points wise. I bought a couple of half built wyverns off eBay, again doing them up with a little bit of friendly freehand such as the state is your friend, and this one that says the purges keep you safe and with some other spare Chimera chassis that I had from eBay. I did a little bit of conversion work with spare bits from my bits box, to use the spare auto cannons to make myself some hydro turrets, I think they borrowed the targeting screeny type thing from the Wyverns, and used some other bits from various Razorback and Space Marine kits, and then these I think were one of my first attempts at magnetisation, as I mounted a magnet under a bit of plastic art on the tank itself, and then did similar on the turret, so they can freely rotate round, and also potentially be swapped out. If nothing else, then this was really handy just for storing the things, as it means that you can potentially stack the tanks, and then put these turrets it's elsewhere. I was quite interested by some of the other Forge World type rules, such as the very cheap Earthshaker platforms that you could get that also threw around big pie plate blast templates, and quite independently I made some little bases for them with some Earthshaker cannons, and actually did the magnetisation on them, literally just with the intent of storing them a bit easier. And it actually genuinely wasn't until later that I realised that I could just happily swap between the two, so it meant that I actually could field some basilisks, which I hadn't even intended trying to do in the first place. And it also works the other way around, I can also use the converted hydro turrets to field some hydro platforms, which are available in Forge World as well. I think it was around this time I also made some rapier laser destroyer platforms, again completely converted, I think that these were from Centurion las cannons that I literally bought in off bit sites stuck to the back of some cheap model tanks from another supplier, and I think do a reasonable job of representing them, particularly when you have a couple of Guardsman crew hanging around them. Another couple of converted Forge World creations are these two, a Medusa platform on the left, that I think was made out of a bit of scenery combined with a Basilisk platform, and a converted Sabre Defence Searchlights type platform, that's made out of a tank searchlight, a Voxcaster, and some plastic art and some Guardsman heavy weapon team people. 
Again, around the Renegade and Heretics type phase, I made a bunch of riot shield infantry, such as these guys. I couldn't actually fit all of them in the shot in the main big picture, but I actually have something like 50 of these guys. The riot shields are just literally bits of converted plastic art, combined with any sort of combat weapon in the other arm. They were actually initially there to represent Plague Zombies in the Renegades and Heretics list, as I thought they did a reasonable job of representing them, infantry with a lot more defence due to the shields, but not really any major attack to speak of. In the current edition, I've been fielding them more as Crusaders, I know they technically have chainswords rather than power swords, but I think they do a reasonable job of representing them, seeing as their shields make them really quite distinctive on the field of battle. Shortly after this, 8th edition happened, and there was much rejoicing, and it actually meant that my Imperial Guard army fairly okay in 7th edition, to being actually one of the strongest things that you could field in 8th. Horde Guard was incredibly strong right when 8th edition dropped, with things like orders being able to allow them to fall back and shoot being quite a unique attribute, 4 point models being ridiculously durable to remove, particularly when anti-infantry weapons weren't quite as efficient at the start of 8th, and plasma guns and deep striking scions or elysians could basically take out most targets in the game at least reasonably efficiently. In particular, mortars got very good very quickly, and I found myself kitbashing quite a lot of these. Some of them, like the one on the right, I did actually have spare mortar bits for, but I basically just repurposed every single hunter-killer missile launcher that I had, stood them on end, and they sort of looked like they do the job. For people who are trying to wargame on a bit of a budget, I do find heavy weapon teams are really cheap to kitbash. Just buy some MDF-type bases that are 60mm in diameter and used spare heavy weapons or anything that looks right, combined with a couple of guardsmen, maybe bought second hand, and you can easily field them en masse. I think these guys also represent the free hand that have done on the shoulder pads fairly well. Basically every single guardsman in the army has the 12 symbol on the left shoulder pad, and the flame motif on the right, which I think adds a little bit of interest to the eye when you're looking at them en masse. As well as mortars, I also kitbashed some heavy bolter heavy weapon teams. I decided to go with a bit more of a different take and look a bit like the saber heavy weapon type teams that I had before. It's mainly sprue and plastic guard for the actual base, accompanied by a normal guardsman crewing them, and I think I used a couple of the door gunners off of the Valkyrie as well to fill out the numbers a little bit. Another thing that I wanted to field was some psychers as well, particularly in the days before the rule of three or smite getting worse when you cast it, you could really spam it to bits with a guard. I already had a couple of psychers, such as the central one here, the word vein psyker, but I felt like I'd like a few more, so I used space marine scout bodies for the psychers, managed on some guardsman legs with a helmeted head, and in the hand using some plastic rods from back banners, and the Aquila Eagle that you get from quite a lot of Space Marine vehicle kits to make a reasonable looking Imperial Staff. This one really makes them so much cheaper than buying expensive resin or metal models, particularly when I wanted something like 10 of the things initially. Rough Riders also got another big lease of life in 8th edition. I honestly never thought that I'd be building and painting any of these, but I really enjoyed them alongside my foot guard for outflanking threats that could get to enemy objectives at the back of the board, and also being a fairly good way to deploy plasma guns at close range to hard targets. I'll admit I went a little bit mad with making these. These guys are made out of Perry Miniatures horses. The rider's legs and left and right arms are from that kit, unless they're holding a plasma gun, in which case they're the Imperial Guard, and they're combined with a Cadian torso, Cadian shoulder pads, and a Cadian head. I was quite pleased with these guys as a conversion on the whole. It's a bit of a shame that they've gone to Warhammer Legends for the moment at least. Fingers crossed Games Workshop might actually reintroduce them into the game at some point in the future. They're a pretty well liked guard unit. Another pretty decent sized conversion project I went to work on was making some kit-bashed Elysian troops. Much like the Rough Riders, I thought they tied in with the theme of Horde infantry really well, adding yet more bodies to the table, and also some much needed deep strike mobility. I decided to go with a unique sort of fixed wing grav shoot, just to make them stand out a little bit. I know they do look a little bit goofy, but they look really quite dynamic when they come in on the table. The backpacks themselves are made out of a Space Marine backpack, with the side vents taken off and mounted on the plastic hard wings that protrude from the side of them. I also got a small force of Scions together, I think I've got around about 15 of these, quite a lot of them armed with plasma guns, as they're certainly one of the strongest ways to field them in 8th. I must say I do find the additional detail on the Scion kits a bit of a pain to paint, it might be partly having white and grey so close to each other, but they really do take quite a lot more time compared with the other infantry. A surprisingly late addition to the army were my Lehman Rust tanks. People were genuinely quite surprised when I always said that I didn't own any for the vast majority of 7th edition and 8th edition. Generally in my fluff, my regiment wasn't as much of an open war type battalion as some others, so I had little need for actual heavy armoured battle tanks, but eventually the raw desire to have tanks in my guard list did overwhelm this, and I now have three fully magnetised Lehman Rosses that are an absolute joy to play with in-game. Judicator, Arbiter and Lawbringer have had plenty of kills, most often fielded with battle cannons, plasma cannons and heavy bolters, often being run as tank commander support for the rest of the army. 
I'm particularly pleased with the magnetization job that I did on these guys. The sponsons can be taken off, the things in the sponsons can be taken in and out so you can have plasma cannons or heavy bolters. You can swap the main turret weapon for various other options such as punisher cannons or regular battle cannons. Swap out the whole mounted weapon and also change the heavy stubber for a storm bolter or nothing at all on the top hatch. At some point I'm going to make another video showing a few more pictures as to how this was achieved. This really was effort well spent though as it means being able to field them in basically any configuration means that I can really go wild with Lehman Rosses knowing that I can field whichever variant most suits my fancy for the list that I'm playing today. I went through a bit of a hellhound phase in 8th edition as well partly spurred on by competitive lists using Artemia pattern hellhounds when they were really undercosted in Forge World. As well as having the same sort of damage output as a hellhound, these guys blew up for a d6 explosion and in fact still do, but they're just a little bit more proportionately costed. I actually wound up buying the Chimera kits rather than the hellhound kits and buying a few sets of Land Raider Redeemer sponsons to magnetise onto the front of the Chimera turret. The reason I did this was that if I ever feel like absolutely spamming Chimeras, I still have all the bits left to magnetise them back into Chimeras, although I'll admit I haven't painted them up at the moment, maybe a project for a future time. I made the big fuel tank out of a photo canister case with some techie bits added onto it, part of the redeemer turret and also part of a vox caster. Those film cases can be magnetised on and off with a magnet attached to the back of the tank's main body and you can also swap out the bits at the front, the redeemer flamer can be taken off and you can also swap out the front plates for a heavy bolter or a heavy flamer like so. Sentinels were another fairly recent addition, mainly for the option to have some more random brigade fillers, so I made three of them. Again, these guys were all completely second hands, so I've got a little bit of a random assortment of weaponry. They can all have las cannons or auto cannons. Again, they've been magnetised out so we can swap them out, and I could always make up some more weapons for them if they needed them for any given format. I've also got a trio of bullgrins as well. These ones were mainly bought just literally because you could get a very gamey Ogrim bodyguard, the one that at the start of 8th edition when the guard codex came out could take the death mask of Alanius, and because of the wording on the rules he could have a 2 plus inball save, so just walk straight through enemy lines tanking bullets like crazy. It was a very silly rules interaction, and it was great fun to use on the table, and Games Workshop didn't wind up FAQing it for about 18 months, so I got quite a lot of use out of them. Maybe at some point later I'll build them up into a bit of a Borgrin Death Star, but it's never been the playstyle that's massively inspired me all that much, so at the moment there's just the three. Finally, I do have a selection of a few random special characters painted up in my colour scheme, most of which were acquired pretty opportunistically as they came in in other big eBay buys. The two on the left, however, are my takes on Ironhand Strachan and Sergeant Harker, refitted for a Cadian sort of purpose, so if I feel like running my guys with Kaschan regimental doctrines to try them out, then I can. I enjoyed kitbashing my Cadian Not Harker out of a Scion head and a Heavy Bolter and Devastator backpack, and Strachan's fairly representative of the actual miniature, with a bionic arm holding a power sword, a plasma pistol, and a shotgun slung on his back. Working on the others was also a bit of a treat, having quite a nice detailed miniature to paint, allowing me to put some real effort into it. I must admit that I really enjoyed painting Colour Sergeant Kel out of all of these, that banner is absolutely beautiful, and was just very easy to highlight and shade properly and I often use him just literally as a standard company commander, just because I think he looks so much cooler on the field. So that's a brief tour of my guard army then. I hope you've enjoyed and maybe had some inspiration for different projects that you could achieve yourself. It's been very much a slow grow army over the course of 10 entire years. I have not sold anything from the guard pretty much over this entire time, just as Warhammer does tend to cycle around again, and things that aren't good at the moment might tend to get good again later, and I haven't wanted to waste the effort that I put into painting them. I appreciate any CNC on the painting, although please do be aware that a lot of this was painted back when I was a teenager. And also I have very much weighed this up as to how much effort I can be bothered to put into it compared with just painting more guardsmen and getting more finished. So some sacrifices and overall quality per miniature have been made. As per the vote on the Patreon page, the next army that I'll be showing off are my Blood Eagle Space Marines. Although it might be in a good couple of weeks, just because these videos take so much more effort to make than the standard tactics ones. Thanks very much for listening to another All Specs Tactics video. If you've enjoyed, feel free to subscribe for more content, both miniature showcases and more normal tactics related stuff. And if you have been enjoying the content recently, then feel free to have a look at the All Specs Tactics Patreon page. It is what allows me to keep this channel going and spend quite so much time making content for you guys. I'm very grateful and I wouldn't be able to do it without you. So if you are watching regularly, then any support is greatly appreciated. And a massive thank you to all of you who are on the Patreon already. In any case, a big thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.